Hey everyone, I'm Ultraviolent4 and you are here for a new playthrough of Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. We're going to be going for an 8 win in a row this time. I've now played every background and most species in the game. Um, so, sort of going to be mixing it up now. Uh, I've got a few in mind. I'm just going to play basically things that sound interesting to me. So as always, if you have any ideas for interesting combinations to play, or if there's something that you want to see, let me know. Uh, and for bonus points, let me know why you think it would be interesting. You just go, play a draconian. I don't know, that's not very compelling. Anyway, uh, the one that we're going to be playing this time is a minotaur, everyone's favorite bovine <laughs> species, uh, a very uh, new player friendly species, but we're going to be mixing it up a little bit. So rather than playing to one of their strengths, which is anything that is a melee sort of fighter, we're going to go a bit more of a hybrid style and we're going to play a transmuter. Alright, minotaur transmuter. So this run, uh, well the reason we're playing Minotaur Transmuter is because of Beta Band or Beta Band, he said he doesn't mind. Uh, basically, I told him that if he did a cosplay of a combination, I would play that, co I would play that combination. So uh, he's been very patiently waiting a couple of months for this one to come around, but I want to show it to you. I had to open the file for this, but I tried not to look at it, so I'm coming at it kind of fresh. Uh, it is amazing though. So this is Better Band's Minotaur Transmuter cosplay. <laughs> oh god, that's ridiculous. Uh, so... <laughs> uh, he's got the horns, the Mickey Mouse horns going, and obviously that's, that's Blade Hands there with the knives. Oh dear. Um, I'll open that up to others of you too. If you want to make a ridiculous cosplay, I'll play it. <laughs> it's got to be like a genuine effort though. It's got to be like that. Um, you know, you actually put a bit of effort into it. Alright, some Minotaurs. Uh, you start off, you don't start off, you have a pair of horns on your head. Means you can't ever wear helmets, but you get the ability to retaliate when monsters attack you. Alright. And if we have a look at... Oh god. Um, we start off with one point of magic. Uh, Minotaurs have plus 10% HP, but they have really low intelligence and they have low magic points. Also if we have a look at our skill menu, basically Minotaurs are amazing at anything on the left hand side of the screen here. Anything to do with melee fighting, range fighting, all their defensive skills. But if you have a look at their magic side, they are woeful. Minus four for spell casting. Transmutations that we're going to be using here is at a minus two. And a lot of other things they're really bad at. Yeah. Is there is nothing, it's not even, they don't even have one skill that they're kind of okay at. Transmutations is the least worst, I guess, so we've got a bit of synergy going on there. Alright, so as a transmuter, um, I didn't really explain what that was, but a transmuter is someone who changes themselves. They transmute themselves. There you go. So we start off with the book of changes. Um, first of all, we have Beastly Appendage. You get two different options for this normally. You can either get Horns or you can get Talons. But because a Minotaur already has Horns, every time we cast it, we'll get Talons. And that will work as long as we don't put Boots on. If you put, if you put Boots on, um, you can't get the Talons. And because we already have Horns, um, yeah, so that won't work. So if we do find boots, we'll have to consider whether we want to keep being able to use beastly appendage 
or if we want to um, have the extra AC from boots. We also, as a transmuter, started off with a bunch of arrows because at level 2 we'll get sticks to snakes, which lets you turn an arrow into a, a snake. And we have a 26% fail. In fact, even just our beastly appendage is a 17% to fail, which is really high due to our low minotaur intelligence. Um, and because we only have one magic point total, we only get one go at it, which is okay. So I'm going to hit, well before we do our skills, I want to set up a macro. So I hit tilde, which is below escape, shift in that key, then M for macro. And I'm going to set up a macro that does ZA. So I can now hit that macro and we'll cast our, our one spell. And then let's look at our, let's look at our skills. Uh, I usually like having one defensive skill. Man, this is going to be a lot of training. Um, I think I'd rather go fighting than dodging. Uh, so we'll get more HP. Unarmed combat is your main offense when you're a transmuter. So you think of unarmed like your weapon skill. It's usually your most important skill. We're going to focus unarmed combat then. We're going to need spellcasting on probably for the whole game, I would imagine. First of all, because we're going to need new spell levels, but also because our magic points are going to be so low. And then we're also going to focus transmutations. Basically, it's a minus two aptitude and again, low int. So unless we really, really um, train transmutations, uh, we're not going to get too far with those spells. <laughs> All right, and let's get going. This is an interesting start. All right. So our, our feet morphed into talons, and our you see here that our our trans transformation lasts barely any amount of time because our spell power is so low. Um, a dart slug can do eighteen damage. We don't have anything to throw at it. I don't really want to yell. What I can do is, okay, what saw us? So I'm going to step back behind the door and I'm going to shut it. The dart slug can't open the door, but um, if we wait for it to come, then we can open it. So it's one, two, three, four, five. It's five turns away and it's a bit slow. So I'm going to wait for say six turns by hitting dot. One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll cast our spell and then we'll open the door. And then, yeah, there it is. Okay, cool. Got a, got a friend watching. All right, so we'll let the arm on. This would give us an extra AC, but it will also make our spell even harder to cast. <laughs> um, normally, <laughs> on my level one characters, even for mages, I love just throwing on the leather armor for the extra AC. Uh, because usually it doesn't affect your spell failure too much. But our Minotaur is so dumb. 17% to fail. With this on, it's 22. That's pretty high. Um, so we're trading 1 AC for 1 EV. I think we need to stay in the road, probably. And that will become even more obvious once we start trying to learn our higher skills. Okay, this goblin has a, a dagger. Makes it much more dangerous. Good. Uh, we don't need to pick that up because we're casting, oh, not casting, we're attacking with unarmed. Let's pick up stones. Uh, we are a streak player, so we want to do some optimal stone throwing. I was going to say like right here as he steps to us, but actually we're better off just casting our spell. And one thing that you should note about doors, um, I don't explain it very often, but it's something that I just do out of habit now. If you're going to fight an enemy on a door, you're better off stepping back a tile because you can't move corpses. So if you actually kill a monster on the door, it will drop its weapon. You can pick that up, but if, if it makes a corpse there, uh, you're never going to be able to shut that door again. So yeah, just to try not to kill enemies on doors if you can help it. Okay, if he's going to throw stones, I don't mind throwing stones back. 
uh, the way that we, I was doing that is with F, which is to fire things. Okay. Um, let's see if we can attract one at a time. Okay, never mind. They both woke up. Okay, so again, get off the door. <laughs> we failed it the first time, but we now have two points of... Oh, and three, because we just leveled up. Three points of magic. Great. Alright, so level two lets us do six sticks to snakes. I have a lot of trouble seeing this. I'm going to put it on S, and I'm going to make a macro for that as well, which is going to do ZS. Okay. It's at a 24% chance to fail, and it uses two magic points. So I think it's not going to be very reliable for a little bit yet. Oh man, we're so bad at transmutations. <laughs> uh, this scroll we picked up, not going to read that yet. Uh, until we until we get some duplicates of scrolls, we don't really have any indication of what that might be. We're also not going to put on this ring because it could be cursed and bad. So unless you have remove curse, uh, not a good idea to try on jewelry. In fact, it's not not a great idea to do anything really. When we tried that leather armor on before, even though it was just plain, it could have been cursed. Yeah, second scroll. So what I'm doing is throwing stones as the enemies approach, and then when they get one tile away, casting our beastly appendage. Get off the door. Alright, got two enemies at once, that's okay. Ah, excellent. So we got, we just found a new stack of arrows, a 25 stack of arrows. That's really amazing. One of the issues with sticks to snakes is that you are basically reliant on RNG to find more arrows because it's a really strong spell. And if you get unlucky, uh, you can't spam it. Oh, we, we failed it. Okay. Early game jackals are really dangerous, particularly if you're someone like this who's in robes. But yeah, we've got we've got Minotaur HP, so and we're fortunately level two rather than level one, so that also makes a big difference. We just got to level three. Basically, as a Minotaur with such low int, every level up we're going to pick Intelligence. <laughs> intelligence um, helps you cast spells, helps you with spell power. Uh, helps you with um, spell hunger. Not that that's an issue, but it's another effect. I'm trying to hit P. <laughs> we went to the teleport trap, which was right near the entrance. I'm glad we didn't hit that right at the beginning of the game. So we could have been teleported right into the middle of that jackal pack at XL1. That would have been very fun. Not this time, we're on to D2. Alright, another batch of arrows. How are we going? 21% for sticks to snakes. If we see something that's kind of dangerous, um, we might at least give it a go. Because we have four magic points now, so we can try sticks to snakes and then still beastly appendage, even if it doesn't work. Um, all our scrolls are single, so there's no indication that any are removed curse. I would love to just put on the plate armor and then, um, yeah, just be a minotaur, but we wouldn't be able to cast. All right, so our first D2 enemy is an adder. That's absolutely terrifying. We've only got a single potion. Um, I mean, maybe that's a potion of curing, but... Chances are it's probably not, seeing as we've only got one. Um, and jackals are, f uh, sorry, well jackals are fast, but adders are fast too, which means you're not running from them. So we pretty much have no choice but to try to fight it here. Uh, we're just going to have to hope that we have enough firepower that we can kill it before we get poisoned to death. 
So it's cost, we fail our basically penny. Let's go again. We failed it again. Okay, third time lucky, and here's another adder. Hmm. Okay, so we gotta try to kill the first one. We don't really have much of a choice of that. But if we do manage to kill that one, there's a good chance that these jackals will kind of just block the adder, the second adder. And we can maybe then run back to the stairs. But let's first of all try to take care of this first adder. Okay, good. And the other adder is indeed behind the jackals. So we're going to start running back to the stairs. We're still full HP. So maybe we could try a sticks to snakes. That did work. Oh, it immediately got killed by the jackals. Alright, let's just take one up with us. Alright, and so two of those stairs were there near the adder. We want to go to the third stair. Where is the third stair? I'm hitting square bracket to look down the floor. Yeah, we want to go to this one. Which is, I think, this one. No. Oops. This one. Okay. Alright, so here we go. Um, we can probably get back to the stairs here. Adders aren't so fast that they're going to run you down over a whole screen. Uh, but we could also try a sticks to snakes. Okay, we got one. Um, I still just don't really feel comfortable fighting an adder. Let's go again. I mean, if our if our snakes are gonna mostly kill it, no, it's not good. Let's just go back up. We didn't have our beastly appendage up either. All right, right. Let's go again. Okay. Oh, okay. So we got our own adder. In this case, we probably can just fight it because yeah, adders are really strong, which is why we're afraid of it. So if you have your own adder, uh, it's just as good. We got a, a second scroll or something that's likely that indicates that it's likely to be either identify or remove curse. So I'm gonna stand on the stair here just in case it's teleport or noise. And I'm gonna read one of them. It's amnesia. Okay, never mind. We don't want to forget our spells. Ooh, there's a buckler. Okay, uh, a buckler is kind of interesting. Um. Because a lot of transmutations actually um, basically meld your buckler. So let's have a look at our starting book. When you're in any form, like spider or ice form, you lose your shield. And when you use blade hands, you use your shield. So it makes us more survivable in the meantime. But it also means a lot of the time we won't actually be using our shield. Which is maybe a good argument not to go to a full on shield. But a buckler is actually not very much of an investment. It's only four skill penalty to use. Um, we don't have remove curse. So as much as I would like to wear the buckler just to show you how much it messes with our spells. It could be cursed even though it's not magical or glowing or anything. So I think what I'm going to do, and especially we have a plus two shield aptitude. So I'm going to turn shields on. I'm going to hit equals to set a skill target. Actually, I'll show you something cool. If you actually look at the shield or the buckler, this works with weapons too. You can press S down here for skill and that will set um, a skill target at the point where your Wow, this is all new too. At 100% training, you reach 4 in about 2 experience levels. Huh. That's that's new. Um, but anyway, you can it will set a target to the skill where the penalty is removed. So I'm just going to hit S. See the target set for shields at 4. Um, probably until it's closer to 4 or even at 4. I'm not going to put the buckler on because... Yeah, it's just going to make our already hard to cast spells even harder. 
And in fact, while we're at it, oh, we don't have the spell levels yet. It's going to say we could learn spider form, but we actually couldn't because, yep, not enough spell levels. That's the minus four spell casting aptitude in action. Quokka. These guys are fast, right? Yeah. So, not that I'm that afraid of him, but just know that you can't run from Quokkas. They're cute, but they're fast. Here's a null pack. Uh, Nulls are terrifying in the early dungeon, particularly if they have hal halberds. So they can hit for 9 plus their halberd. If we query a halberd, that's another 13 damage. So these guys can do 22 damage per hit and their range. So if you go into melee to try to attack them, they can hit you and then if you try to run, they can hit you again. So yeah, don't want to fight that. And we're getting sort of sandwiched in. That guy threw a net. Uh, we could have got netted adjacent to this one. Okay, so we're basically running back to the stairs and hoping we don't meet someone like Sigmund on the way. He <laughs> Snow random energy us, so he got an attack off, and we retaliated and headbutted him. And nearly killed him, actually. That's cool. Alright, so we're approaching the stairs. I didn't want to take the Null up until we just half killed him with headbutt. Um, so I was thinking what I would do is try to make a sticks to snakes. Ooh. My plan was that the snake would come behind us, and then we could use it to block the Null. But the thing is, we just rolled an adder, which is really good. Um, so what happens here is that if you have summons or followers, monsters tend to chase you. So if we start running away, the null is chasing us. But because the adder is fast, well, the null didn't <laughs> decide to go for the adder. But generally, it's like a win-win. Either the null chases us and the adder gets additional attacks or it stops to fight the adder, in which case we get away. He's poisoned and nearly dead. Let's go another snake. We failed it. Ah, I feel like it's worth taking him up. He doesn't have a weapon. He's not as scary. We just failed it again. Uh, we can sort of run him around a bit. Okay, there we go. We got our beastly appendage out. Uh, although, we're potentially going to die here. Um, because we've got 8 HP and he can hit for 9. So I'm just going to start running around here to regen some health and hopefully he doesn't random energy and then hit us for everything we've got. Let's go around this one, this is a bit easier. So we're basically using this as a chance to heal back up again. I kind of want to try a sticks to snakes to distract him a bit. Oh, there's a the random energy. Uh, the problem is that we're on D1, so we can't really go upstairs. Alright, and now he's dropping back because of the random... He got random energy to get on top of us and hit us, which means he's then likely to drop back. So while we've got this gap, let's try sticks to snakes. We got one. So I'm running back towards a snake. Okay, come on snake. It's constricting, excellent. Alright, and this stair is now where the gnolls are probably hanging out, so we're picking a new stair. Hmm. Alright, if we get in the open like this, we can try to make our own snake to help. Mm, we're getting really poisoned. Good, we got there. Oh, the Null's back, or one of them. Alright, so what are we going to do here? Uh, if one Null's there, that worries me that the Halberd Nulls are around. Um, I don't want to run into the unknown, so I guess it's better to loop around and sort of head down, which is probably away from them, seeing as they were up here last time. Uh, but if we get trapped... Uh, between this knoll and a new one coming in, we're in a lot of trouble. Okay. Oh dear. Alright. Yeah. Okay. I knew it. They were coming. Huh. 
All right, can this one hit us? Nine plus its flail. Sorry, can it kill us? Uh, definitely, because the halberd nor can also hit us here. But just for science, how much is a flail? 10 damage. So he can hit for 19. He can kill us here. Uh, he can kill us with one hit. Um, definitely, if because I was thinking maybe I would make a snake, and then again it would block the gnolls and we'd get away. But if I cast one here, the null, the halberd, and the flail can both attack. So we basically just got to run. Um, okay, halberd guy has dropped back. This null can no longer one shot kill us. So I think we try to make a snake here. And then we can maybe get a gap and we can get back to the stairs. We failed it. Figures. Uh, halberd null is still away. Let's go again. Okay, all right, so that, this guy immediately killed the snake with one hit, but we've now got a gap. So as long as he doesn't random energy back on top of us, we can just run all the way back to the stairs. Okay, fingers crossed. Oh, he got back on top of us. Hmm. Do we go again? I think we do. Mm, it went behind rather than in front. Alright, let's go up. Can't afford to uh, be just running around down there with a halberd all around. Okay, so we need to do a similar thing. Let's find a new pillar to run around to get our HP back. Man, no one's. There's a, a good one over here. Poison of random energy. Alright. So because he dropped behind here, what we can do is shut the door and every time we shut it, he's going to reopen it, which is fine because uh, it's just, it's like running away, but it's easier because I'm just hitting shift C to shut the door rather than have to manage all our movement and eventually he's going to get random energy and step through it like that. So now we've got to start running again, but we can make a snake. Or we could just run around back to the door again, actually, is what I'll do. Totally non-degenerate gameplay here. Ooh. This is one of the reasons that you need to have random energy in the game. As annoying as it can be, uh, it means that any time you had a door, you could just, uh, like, in a fail-proof way, you could just regen back to full HP. All right, now that we're nearly there, hey, we even got a gap. No. All right, well, let's try another snake. And uh, we're starving, but so we're gonna eat this time. All right, we got an adder, so I think we can fight him now. Yeah, we're really strong when we have an adder with us. We gotta to go to a different stair though. How are we going for arrows? Uh, that's not the button I wanted. Uh, we're still at 43 arrows, which is plenty. Um, but there are two issues here. When we're running from the halberd knoll, if we ever meet, there's a spear knoll, I think. Or there's some, there's another knoll that's running around. If we get trapped between them, we're in a lot of trouble. Let's see if we can get some adder rolls. But two ball pythons. I think Halberd Null is just going to destroy them. Apparently not. Man, they wrecked him. Um, so what do we work out? He does 21 or 22 damage. Um, so we actually can't afford to be hit at all. We basically need snakes to kill him. Go Python. No. Failed. We need the adder. He's also random energy back on top of us, as in. Oh no. Okay, here's a rat. Ah. Uh, we're gonna have to run into the unknown. We've been followed by a rat. 
it hasn't seen us now, but if we step back here and then the rat notices and steps into here, we're going to be trapped between the two. So going into the unknown, um, this is so bad. Let's see if we can get, okay. And I think it might be time just to try to fight him. We can get two shot, but running into the unknown gives us a decent chance of being trapped between this null and someone even worse. So let's do our appendage and hope we don't get too short. Okay, good. I can breathe again. Oh dear. D2 Howard Nulls. <laughs> you can get them on D1 if you're unlucky. But yeah, he's got a whip of freezing. That's okay. Hey, and we get to claim the throwing net that he had. Uh, here's a ring mail. At some point in the future, we might be able to go to that, so I'm picking it up. A Spino is still scary, but he's not as scary as the Halberd Null. Um, actually, we need to be running though. Come on, snake, snakes. No. Okay, we've got the adder, that should do it. Yeah, good. He had a potion too. We don't know what that is, but... Um, okay, well we miscast sticks to snakes twice, that's good. Uh, these guys are faster, so you can't run. Let's do our app. Never mind, we kill it with headbutt. But yeah, if you get an early null that has something like a potion of berserk rage, uh, you can get destroyed. Uh, there's Nemlex. There are still a couple of gods that I haven't played yet, so we're going to be picking one of those. Uh, you can perhaps tell which one by looking at the, the thumbnail art for this one. I'd expect that most of you could. Oh, there's Sigmund. All right, let's just get away from him. We don't know about curing, although this, the fact that we have three of one suggests that it's there's a good chance it's curing. But if he if he confuses us, we could straight up die. So we, we're going to the third stair that's away from where Sigmund is. And we're going to basically try to stick away from him. Okay, good. Okay, orc packs are really dangerous once you get to D3 because um, there might be a wizard or a priest. Also, I knew that was going to happen when I started going up, but I did it anyway. Um, yeah, it's a very bad stare to stare dance things up because if you have more than one, you're going to get trapped between them. Let's get our beastly appendage up. And I think. We can probably fight this. It's taking this really slow. Okay, good. All right, if that started going bad, we would have had to start quaffing stuff. Um, I would have started with the three because, as I was just saying, that's probably curing. Oh no, there's three of them. Okay, <laughs> I knew that too. Why did I go back down? Uh, well, we already saw what happened if I stare dance. Um, multiple orcs up here, we get trapped. So my plan here is to loop around this pillar and then hopefully we can just take one of them up. Yeah, see so they're chasing. Uh, let's f just want to take one up. We could also fight them here in the hallway like this, so we're doing one at a time. All right, that's okay. It's not good. We got that stair there. That's really bad for stair dancing. And then the other two stairs are over near Sigmund. Hard life. That's a Gozag altar. That's not our god this time. Good. 
we reached level 5. How are we going on the buckler front? 1.2. We still got to get to 4. That's going to be quite a while uh, because of how many things we're training. I think no, I don't really want to turn fighting off. It's so good. A second scroll or something. So we're going to read it on the stairs. That's identify. All right. Let's start doing the potions. Ambrosia and flight. Ambrosia is kind of okay. In the early game, uh, most things can't overwhelm your healing. So it confuses you and then increases your magic and health regeneration. Um, but yeah, even though you are confused, most monsters this early won't be able to kill you through it. Um, but still, those potions are not amazing. Let's see, and this is, I mean, we're playing Minotaur, should be easy, but yeah, I think Transmuter is one of the weakest starts. Alright, we should have spell levels now, we do. Um, so let's go to Spider Form. Alright, and make a macro for that one too. Alright, we pretty much can't use this unless we're going to train some poison. Um, let's see. So sticks to snakes, I think we still need some more transmutation before I'm trying not to sneeze. Alright, we're good. <laughs> uh, so I think we should get a bit more transmutations, maybe to three, and then we'll look at training some poison. Spider form is really, really good for the transmuter. It's just that, yeah, with minotaur aptitudes where getting it later than I would normally like. Okay, I probably, I'm just hitting auto explore, but I guess that's really dangerous with Sigmund. I don't want to be anywhere near him. This guy has Freezing, yeah, that's all right. Man, you just miscast beastly appendage three times in a row. That's a hand axe with chopping. Whenever I'm seeing the, the glowing war axe, I'm checking that's not poison or distortion or something. Here's our priest. Okay, uh, because we're a minotaur, we're, we're blessed with a lot of HP. But these guys can do 17 damage per smite, which is an enormous amount. Let's try a snake. Okay, one more. Okay, we've got an adder, so now I don't mind just fighting him. I mean, I was committing to it anyway by running at him. Uh, but with 42 HP, we should be fine, probably. And I'm just going to start hitting him rather than use an extra turn to cast Beastly Appendage. Particularly with the adder, we probably just want to kill him as fast as we can. Good. Spellcasting to two. <laughs> oh man, what's his deal? He's got a flail, but he just hits like a monster. I started backing up, trusting that the adder would just finish him off. Um, check our arrows. Still got 32, so yeah, we have no problem just spamming it. Hey, we got another two scrolls or something. Alright, I'm going to check that. If we can get Remove Curse, then it allows us to start putting our rings on. And we've got a 3 of something. But, um, now that we've got Identify and Remove Curse, I'm going to hold those 3 until D4. Because they could be Magic Mapping. Alright, so now we can try our rings on. Plus 3 in. Wow, that's, uh, that's a bonus. <laughs> and Curse Teleportation, that's why we... We wait till we have Remove Curse, so we want to drop that one. There is basically no use for that anymore. You used to be able to evoke it to just teleport randomly, uh, but now it periodically just sends you at monsters. Alright, there's Sigmund. Uh, he's awake and he's coming. Because I want to, I really, really, really don't want to get confused without curing. Um, I'm going to make a snake. And the idea is that the snake is going to sit between us and Sigmund, and he's going to block any incoming 
confusion costs. And we're just going to try to block him all the way back to the stair. Okay, good. So we can't come here. And at this point, we've done most of the floor. We can explore around this bit a little bit now. That we know Sigmund's over the other side, but I think um, there should be one more downstairs. I know that because there are three per level, and we've seen two here. Um, but when we see another downstairs, I think we'll just go down a new ring, but we don't have any remove curse. So we're holding off on that one too. Alright, there's a work at Ant. Uh, they're fast and poison you, and we still don't have curing, so that's really scary. If we could get an adder, it would be perfect. We did not. Um, but the ball pythons will help. Good. The ants are susceptible to poison, so yeah, with an adder, uh, they'll die very easily. Damn. Found him again. Okay, let's make our snake. Uh, we've got an adder. The problem is, if we get confused, we might just die. I think we have to start running. And maybe if we're lucky, the adder will just kill him. Oh, we got a second adder. Let's just spam him with snakes. Um, they might do it. I think they're going to do it. Yes. Okay, sick. <laughs> uh, more int. Okay, so there you go. There's, there's sticks to snakes. Single-handedly killing a D3 Sigmon. I know that there are some players, uh, it's actually not that uncommon, where when they're playing Transmuter, they don't even learn this spell. You're insane if you don't learn st Sticks to Snakes, it's so hard to say, because uh, it is so strong. And particularly as you, um, as you get high spell power on it later, uh, you, you get the even um, stronger Snakes. And there is, there's almost nothing in the game that will survive infinite waves of snakes running at it. Six, so we got a bunch, couple more rings that once we get removed curse, we can try again. All right, onto D4. This is the first floor that we can find the temple. So I like to stand on the stairs and read the rest of my scrolls here. There's the magic mapping, that's why. And then, I'm searching for the temple, and it is it is over there, um, up in this corner. All right, uh, we could go to a stair that's closer to it. All right, so we're gonna go back up. Well, let's just read the rest of our scrolls first. Fog and teleport. Go back upstairs, so you don't get teleported into the brand new level. That's the start of a D4 Ice Beast. That's terrifying. Uh, you see the game is marking it as a red enemy. Um, if we had the ability to cast Ice Form, which we don't, uh, we could get RC and then it would be kind of safer, but we don't. So I think we just go back up. We X that stair out and we go to the third one. We hope it doesn't notice us. This is still so... Oh man, we got a water macassan. Alright. So we want to go to the temple. It's being guarded by this shaft trap. Um, you normally don't get shafted by a shaft trap you are aware of. But my understanding of a shaft trap is that there's always a chance you fall through it. doesn't tell you. I think there's a chance that you always get dropped. Um, can we make a snake with T, which is the screen you use to um, give it orders, and hit TR for a treat and tell it to go up here. I think it will fall down the shaft. No, it didn't. Okay. Oh wait, okay, well it's alright, we've, <laughs> we've we've tricked a null to come into it. Alright, so that worked. Okay, good. 
good. Ah, okay. Well, here's our altar. So, if you couldn't tell, uh, we're going to be playing Wu Jian Council. I have never played this god before, so this is going to be new for me. Uh, okay, so it's the congregation of martial monks ascended to divinity after battling their way out of the afterlife. That sounds really badass. Disciples of the council are able to execute acrobatic martial maneuvers such as wall jumps, spinning attacks, and punishing lunges. They will eventually become able to request help in the form of a storm of heavenly clouds. So this is the ninja god. It's only in trunk at the moment. It's not actually in the stable release of the game. And I actually, I was kind of thinking that it would never happen. But not two days ago, maybe three, certainly very recently, um, there have been some changes to the god sort of reworking some of the abilities. Uh, I think I will go over those though in the start of the next one. Um, so we'll end that one here. Well, let's actually first join the religion. The council welcome, welcomes you. You can now perform damaging attacks by moving towards foes. Sick. It's not an invo god. Yep. So we don't need to train invocations, which is good because, um, again, our aptitudes are already um, going to be a major struggle because we're a minotaur doing magic. So, uh, yeah, not having to do invo as well is good. All right. So, yeah, join me in the next one. We'll see, we'll start trying to figure out, first of all, what this god does, and then we'll see if we can get him rolling. See you then.